Hi, my name is Jonathan Pickup. Welcome to my introduction to AutoCAD. This is going to be a really simple introduction to AutoCAD. In fact, all of these movies are going to focus mainly on simple, very simple AutoCAD. This course is designed for use with high school students to teach them how to create very simple models and drawings using AutoCAD. First thing I'd like to show you is that AutoCAD can be used with this area down the bottom here, the command line. We have access to tools at the top, for example, lines and polylines and circles. But AutoCAD also supports typing in the name of the command you're looking for. For example, if I want to type lines, I can type in the word line and it will find lines. And that's the same as clicking up here to activate the line tool. If you just type L and enter, it will also activate the line tool. So some people that have gotten used to these commands in AutoCAD find it extremely fast to use because they can type in the first letter of the thing they want to do. For example, I might want to mirror, MI, mirror. And I might want to extrude, which is EXTR. So there are just lots of commands that we can type in. First of all, let's make sure we're using the right units. So I'm going to type in units. And let's have a look at our units. So I'm using decimal units. Length is my precision, which I could change depending on the engineering drawing that I'm trying to make or the architectural drawing that I'm trying to make. I can choose the angle type, decimal degrees, with my precision, maybe a couple of decimal places for that. And then I can choose my units, whether I'm working in millimeters or whether I'm working in inches, feet, yards, uh, parsecs, light years, and so on. Millimeters, I think, for what I'm trying to do. So I click OK. So that's the first part, is we can choose our units. So now we know that these numbers down the bottom here, these represent millimeters. The other thing that we can do with AutoCAD is we've got an area for modeling. This area here is called model space. And down the bottom here, we have the option to look at our model space or these layouts are what are known as paper space or our pieces of paper or our drawings. So this is a representation of my three dimensional object on a piece of paper. To show you the relationship between model space and paper space, I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to extrude this rectangle, so I'm going to type in EXTR is extrude. I click on that object, hit the enter key, I can pull that object up, click again, and I've now added something to my model. Let's go back to my layout and see what's happened. And you'll notice now my model has included this little bit of thing that I created, my little extruded rectangle. It appears here, it appears in this view, this view over here, and this view up here. So it's a great way of keeping a drawing. You model it in model space and the drawings update for you. You don't have to do anything. It's very effective. Now to delete an object, we just move our cursor to it, click, it highlights in blue, hit the delete key, and it goes. This is a complete object that I've uh, created by using rectangles and manipulating it. So let's click on that, we'll delete that. Now I do have the sizes for it, you can see I've got the sizes down below. I've got 40 millimeters, 80 millimeters long, it's it's 15 millimeters in this direction, and it's 35 millimeters. So there's a lot of sizes that I do know, and all of those sizes are here on my layout. There they are there. So I'm going to start by selecting everything. An easy way to do that on a Windows machine is Control A. On a Macintosh, it's Command plus A. And then I'm going to delete. So I've actually gotten rid of everything. Let's start by drawing a rectangle. And the rectangle needs to be 80 millimeters in one direction. So I can type 80, hit the Tab key. And I can make it 40 in the other direction. Enter, Enter. And that's given me my rectangle. The next thing I'm going to do is to create my other rectangles. So at the top here there's one which is 15 by 35. So back to my rectangle tool up here. Or I can type RECT. And I want to start at this corner. You'll notice that it snaps to that corner. So I have the ability in AutoCAD to snap to objects. So we snap there, we come along. This is minus 35, tab, and 15 in the other direction. Type in 15, enter, and it creates that rectangle. 
I can go back and choose the rectangle tool, but another technique that AutoCAD has is that if you hit the Enter key again, it will reactivate that tool. So it's reuse existing tool or reuse last tool. And again, we want to snap to that corner. We want to come up, so we're going to come up. Now this time we're going to come up 15 and 10. Now I didn't hit the Enter key at the right time, so I'm just going to select that and delete it. I'm going to start that again, so I do have to go back, choose my rectangle tool, and I can start drawing again. So this time we want to be 15 in that direction, tab, minus 10 in that direction, enter, and I've got my rectangles. I'm going to extrude these now. So I'm going to type extrude. There's my extrude command, enter, click on the first object that you want to extrude, click on the second object you want to extrude, and the third one, and then hit the enter key. And now you can extrude these up, and the height that we need to come up is 80 millimeters. Type in 80 and enter. Now at the moment it doesn't look much like my object that I wanted to create because it looks like a gigantic uh, extruded rectangle. But now I'm going to try something new. I want to subtract some of these objects from others. This is the easiest way to create models in 3D is to create some simple shapes and then subtract from them. So I'm going to type in subtract. Subtract, there it is there, enter. Now the first thing I have to do is to select the base object. So here I'm going to select the base object, click, and when I enter, AutoCAD knows that I've finished selecting my base objects. Now it wants to know which parts to select to, for the subtraction. So that one, and that one, when I enter again, it'll take those away. And there I have my extruded object. If I go back to my layout, we should find that it's changed and you'll notice because I drew this in a different location it's all moved. So I'm going to select all again and I'm going to delete that and I'll show you how to recreate that object. Now let's recreate this drawing. Up here where it says base, click and I want to create it from model space and this should be my front elevation. Click and enter. Let's move up so this is the plan view up here, click, and then I'm going to move across this side, this should be my side view, click, and up here I can click again, and when I enter for the final time it puts all my drawings in place for me. Let's go back to model space and now we can create some other objects or we can punch a hole through it. Now at the moment I've got my view shaded with edges, just here which is shaded with edges, and you might find that some of your screens look like wireframe, which is this one here, and so you can't see the, the shape, it just looks like a bunch of lines, so you can click here where it says wireframe, choose shaded with edges, and you'll see the edges. We can use this area here to turn the view, you can see it's turning my view around. But you can also use your middle mouse wheel button. If you scroll with your middle mouse wheel button, you can zoom in and out. If you hold down the middle mouse wheel button, you can pan the view left and right. And if you hold down shift with the middle mouse wheel button, you can actually turn your view around, which is really handy. Now the next thing I want to do is to punch a hole, and I need to find the center of this object. If I get my circle tool, I might be able to find the top center. You can see the triangle there. I might be able to find the center here but I might also be able to find the center here. This is the 3D center of that face. Now why are my snaps working when yours might not be? Let's have a look here. We've got the snap mode down the bottom here. I'm going to look at my snap settings. And on my snap settings, now my snap to grid is off. So grid is not on. Snapping to the grid is also turned off. If you turn these on, you will snap to the grid, which can cause some troubles. I like object snap, and here I've got my object snap turned on, I've got my end point, midpoint, center, and also in 3D, my 3D object snap, I've got midpoint on edge, center of face, perpendicular. Don't turn them all on. If you turn them all on, it can start to get like you've got too many objects, particularly this one here nearest to face. It'll select all over the place. So those are my snaps. So with my circle tool, I should be able to find the center of my face which is right there, click. 
the size that I want this to be is six millimeters quarter of an inch in radius so it's 12 millimeters or half an inch in diameter when I enter it creates the circle for me now we need the extrude command again so extr extrude enter let's click on that circle enter and just use your shift and your middle mouse wheel button and just make this go through a little bit now we're going to subtract sub subtract so click on our first object that's our base enter click on this cylinder here enter and it punches the hole for you right through so what's that done to my layout let's go and have a look at our layout down the bottom here got our layout it's updated and you can see now my hole is visible so this is how we create our first object we've got our model space we've got a paper space and now we can dimension you might find this dimension works okay I don't like that one so much I'd like you to use this linear dimension here so what I do is I click at that corner to start with click at this corner here and we click to place it now at the moment it's got a, pre a precision with four decimal places if we select that dimension we have our properties here now my properties is open and yours might not be so how do we get to properties right click and properties that'll open up the properties dialog box so here on our properties dialog box we have something that we have to scroll quite a long way down there's something here called precision and you can choose the appropriate precision for your drawings if it was an architectural drawing it might be uh, like that if it was an engineering drawing you might use that but if you wanted high quality engineering drawings you might use several decimal places we can change the text size here we can choose the text height we can choose the text offset so we can have a lot of play with those things back to our linear dimension tool so I need a dimension from here to there let's put that one over here we need the height so again we need to go back to our dimension tool snap there snap there and I'm going to come out until I line up with that one click now those two dimensions line up which is quite nice we want to put some more dimensions in so I'm going to use the linear tool again click there click there click to place it enter key again that'll uh, get it, uh, my dimensions going again click there click there and click enter key again click there there put a dimension over here now that didn't work the way I wanted it to so I'm going to do that dimension again linear make sure I'm snapping to that object make sure I'm snapping to that object and you can see my dimension isn't what I wanted it to be so I'm going to find another place to dimension here linear click here click there and that's where the dimension should go there one more dimension let's see if we can dimension the center of our circle to that point there and back to my linear dimension again so from the center of that circle to that point there and that should be the dimension for that one if I select my dimensions again I just have to click on each one you can see my precisions changed and let's go back to my precision which was scroll down remember it's the properties if it's not open right click and open properties uh, precision down here we're going to have that precision now if you want to show tolerances you can have tolerances displayed here using symmetrical uh, the tolerance precision we can have that and how much precision do we want 0.1 so it should be plus or minus or torrents upper limit 1.1 plus or minus 0.1 of a millimeter and we can also change the tolerance scale text height here 0.7 and you'll notice that all my tolerances have now got slightly smaller tolerances or slightly slightly smaller text for the tolerances and I forgot to select that one and that one as well all right so I need to do those two as well so where did we go to we went down here to precision we chose 0.1 we also went to tolerances and we showed symmetrical 
we had a precision of 0.1 with an upper limit of 0.1 and we did the tolerance text height 0.7 so there we are, I've got my text on there, I've got my tolerances. The only other thing left for me to do is put my text for this being the plan, the front elevation and side elevation. We can use the text tool for that. It's my text tool. Click to start, or you can just click and drag. And now I can put in text and I can say plan. There it is, my plan view. I can drag that around. I can put it where it's a good place for it. And I should be able to uh, move a copy, drag a copy or move a copy. So you might find there are some tools in here that allow you to drag copies of things. You can also copy and paste. So you could select that and go copy. Click down here and go paste and it'll place the plan. And now we need to edit that. Double click on it and we can call this the front elevation. And if I stretch that out there. So I'm now going to select that, use the, my copy, control C, come over here, click control V, and I want to make sure I line up with those. And click for that. Double click on it. This is my right elevation. This is my isometric view, which I can move around. I can just click and drag that if I want to, move it out of the way. And that's a quick introduction to creating an engineering drawing using AutoCAD in 3D.